You're listening to the Goggler Podcast, Bahir and Uma with you. We're going to be talking about a brand new TV series on HBO and HBO Go. Max, if you are in the United States, it's called Bookie. And this is by Chuck Lore, who is, of course, one of the godfathers of TV comedy. He's responsible Mm. for... Two and a Half Men, he's responsible for Big Bang Theory, he's responsible for the Kaminsky Method, and here he is on Max with a TV series that neither Bahir nor I can classify because it's not your typical television comedy, but it's still funny in a dark, situational way. This isn't a ha-ha Chuck Lorre comedy. No. No. There aren't like punchline set up joke type scenarios. No, there isn't. There aren't any one-liners either. I'll tell you where it's similar to Chuck Lorre's other stuff in that it's a very boys being boys, men being men kind of approach. That's where the kind of character interactions and comedy comes from. I was going to say this is very much like HBO's other under seen series featuring Dwayne The Rock Johnson called Ballers. It's funny, but it's not jokes funny because it's not a drama. It's not a drama. It's not a comedy. Neither is it a dramedy. It's not a dramedy either. This is that third genre that I keep trying to tell you guys about. Yes. Right? This is like Dave. This is like Rami. And the one that you keep coming up with bad names for. I only have one terrible name for it and I'm sticking with it. It's not a good name. It's terrible name. It's not a drama D. It's a comma. Yeah, I don't like it. Sounds like coma. It's 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 a hard sell, but that's the only thing I can think of. So I don't know the comedy of Sebastian Maniscalco, who is the lead of this, but he is a comedian. Apparently, he is very well known for his physical comedy, and he's got a whole bunch of comedy specials, and he's the lead in this, and he plays a bookie, like an old-fashioned yes. bookie in an age where obviously everything has moved online. But this is the kind of bookie who you make bets with, and you know he'll hit you up for a bit until you start owing him a lot of money, and then he may show up and punch you in the face. But he's nice about it. Because for him, it's part of the game, right? You come in to place a bet with him. We both know what the rules of engagement here are. I will give you a little bit of leeway. But at some point, if you don't pay me back, I'm going to come in and punch you in the nose. That said, I think they're very smart in the way they've set this comedy. Because setting it in LA makes sense. Since California hasn't legalized the whole online betting thing yet. so. It doesn't feel like a period piece. It's very, very current. So that's what this eight-episode series is about. It's essentially the misadventures of this bookie and his buddies. And I say misadventures because obviously they find themselves in unlikely situations. I will say this, though. Charlie Sheen plays the best version (laughs) of Charlie Sheen. This is the Charlie Sheen version that if ever I get a chance to meet, this is the one I want to meet. The series is littered with cameos because obviously Chuck Lowe knows all these famous people as well. And I think he just called them up and went, hey, you want to be in my show for five minutes? And so all of them, Ray Romano, Charlie Sheen, they kind of play versions of themselves. I don't think Ray Romano was playing a version of himself, though. I think he was playing a character. We don't know if Ray Romano is actually a gambler who is very, very steeped in debt. But unless he's playing Ray from the TV show. Or he's playing the character from Men of a Certain Age, where he was a gambler oh, who was steeped in debt. Oh, maybe. But I don't think he is. I think he's got a different name in this one. But there are plenty of cameos, and one of those cameos is Charlie Sheen, who is playing Charlie Sheen at a rehab center, which is shocking for a couple of reasons. I thought he and Chuck Law had a massive falling out after he was fired, and they did. There were some choice words exchanged, but they seemed to be back together again. And the other shocking thing, of course, is did you notice who else was on the gambling table when he shows up? No. Angus T. Jones, who plays his nephew in Two and a Half Men. Really? He is also at the table. Wow. It's Chuck Lowe having a lot of fun. But at the same time, it's not just fan wank because I think the story that develops across these episodes actually grows to be something. 
like it's hard to judge by just watching the first episode. But once I hit episode three, I found that I was really into this and I started really enjoying these characters and liking the crazy shit they were doing. I'd seen the poster on the HBO Go app just constantly since about November because it dropped in early November, I think, or late November. And I always given it a pass because I didn't know who any of the actors were. So I was like, maybe this is just another boring TV show. And I was bored a couple of days ago and I just put it on and I immediately texted you. I was like, this isn't a great show, but it is bingeable, right? And I was only about at the end of episode one, I think. Again, this isn't this isn't a groundbreaking show, but it's absolutely bingeable. And I think HBO releasing this show sort of two episodes at a time works because you kind of want to keep watching. But if you gave it time, you might not come back to it. It's one of those. But nobody's talking about the show and I don't know why. I agree. I don't know why. Because it isn't a bad show. It's actually a genuinely yeah. good show. And it's a lot of fun. And I think it's very well written. The actors are very, very good. It's nice to see Jorge Garcia back because we had him for quite a few seasons in Hawaii Five-0 in the reboot. And that's what he was doing post-Lost. But I really like him as an actor. And here he plays... He's a former weed dealer that's now... Who's now an Uber driver. Because weed's now legal in California and he just takes it out on sort of dispensaries. But anyway. I love that. I love that. In the first episode, there's just a scene where he just pauses, gets out of his Uber, grabs a baseball bat, smashes the window of a dispensary and then just gets back into the car and drives. You know what it is? I feel like the show's inability to be pigeonholed in a genre is working against it. It is the same problem that we had with Ballers because we could never figure out how to tell people to watch Ballers, right? Because they would say, is it a comedy? Is it a drama? And then they would be like, oh, I don't like American football. And that became the problem, right? There were too many things that were that were the obvious thing about those shows but were not what the shows were about. And of course, the sad thing is... Ballers is probably one of the best things that Dwayne Johnson has done. Oh, I disagree. I think it is the best thing Dwayne Johnson has done. Because <laughs> Dwayne Johnson's yeah. actually acting. He's playing a character. He's doing yes. scenes. He's falling in love, falling out of love. He's getting his heart. There's so many things Dwayne The Rock Johnson is doing in that thing that you finally see him as Dwayne Johnson, the actor, right? Yes. I feel like it's the same thing with like Entourage. A lot of people know of Entourage. A lot of people haven't seen it. It's that thing of like, oh, but it's not a comedy. It's not a drama. Because it is not a Chuck Lorre sitcom, it becomes hard to describe, thus becoming harder to figure out what words to use to convince someone to go and watch it. Is it Chuck Lorre or Chuck Lorre? I could never tell. I think it's Chuck Lorre. Okay, let's go with Chuck Lorre. Let's try that for a while. You would think that viewers of HBO would be used to this by now. Because all of the examples that we've given are shows on yeah. HBO. Ballers, Entourage, this one. I think Hacks falls under the same category. Hacks falls under the same category, exactly. And I think if not for the Emmy recognition, fewer people would have watched Hacks. But when you watch Hacks, you're like, okay, wait, this is not a ha-ha comedy. It's not a drama. It's in that in-between space. It's not a ha-ha comedy, but it's not a drama. It falls in between those spaces that becomes, that makes it a lot harder to convince someone to watch it. And like Barry, Bookie 2 goes to some dark places. Not quite as violent places as Barry, but at the same time, I think emotionally and conceptually dark. Here's why I think it feels a lot like Entourage, because the end of the episode resolves whatever problem they were having, right? Like, in right. the first episode, there was this thing about like, oh, maybe I murdered a guy. And it's like, oh my God, is this how this show's going to go? Is this going to go into some mafia, dark gangster territory? No, nah, second episode, they move on. And then they find out that actually they didn't kill the person and they move on. And it's fine. They hug and they move on, you know? And it's like, oh, okay. And I love that. I love that these problems are not multi-arc problems. They just get resolved and they just move on. We wanted to record this podcast because we watched the show and we really think you should give it a shot because it's one of those rare shows that kind of is out there, is criminally underwatched, but feels different from everything else we are getting. 
And I think that's why it works, because it's really rooted in character. Like, this was a show that feels like it was written around the concept of characters that Chuck Lorre had in mind. The same goes for Hacks, the same goes for Ballers. It's not based on some high concept. It's not based on a family trope. It's not based on any of those things. It just feels like it's rooted on cool ideas for characters, Mm. which is why we think Bookie is worth your time and you need to check it out. Yeah, I'm so glad you stumbled upon it because when you told me to check it out, I wasn't sure what I was getting into because I had heard nothing about the show. And like you said, it's one of those things I couldn't put my finger on it. But then after the first episode ended, I immediately wanted to watch the second episode. In these 20 minutes, Laurie does enough to get me invested in these characters that I almost immediately want to find out more. He also doesn't overplay the cameo stuff. Like the Charlie Sheen thing was really restrained. These cameos are what a traditional cameo is, right? You don't gurn for the camera. You don't, you know, like, hey, 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 look who it is, right? It's a cameo appearance by a guy who we all know shouldn't be in this show, but he's there for maybe 30%, 40% of one episode. And that's fine. Thanks for playing. I'll see you never. And that's beautiful. I love that. I think people should give it a shot. The episodes are less than half an hour each. I think you'll have a good time. I think so too. Watch Bookie on HBO Go. You can reach out on all of our social media feeds, GogglerMY. You can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline, 012-524-5208. If you drop us a line on any one of those channels, we'll send you a link to join our Discord server where you can chat with us in real time. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Goggler Podcast.